Welcome to CarDesign.Academy. This is the third in a series on how to set up a vehicle architecture. Uh, so we, we've built a, a series of uh, tires that we're going to be using for uh, several exterior models, a truck, a crossover, and a sports car. And this is the tire that I built for the crossover in the last video. And what I'm going to do today is, is show you how to set up the proper um, set of wheels for a full exterior model. So this is going to have a set of four wheels in the correct dimension for, uh, uh, for a midsize CUV or a crossover. Um, I used the published dimensions from the Range Rover Velar, so that's line four here. Um, so I have, I have the wheelbase, I have the tire diameter, tire width, uh, the published tire size, the rim size, all of that um, already baked into the, uh, the tire model that I built. Uh, so as you remember, I, I, I used a website uh, to calculate the tire diameter using the published tire spec, which is a 265-40R22. Uh, so using this website, um, uh, 265, uh, 40, R22, and that gives you uh, a diameter of 30.3 inches, which if you um, use uh, the conversion of 25.4 millimeters to an inch, you get a, uh, a rim diameter of uh, 597. Now you do have to add in an inch and a half uh, um, of diameter there for the section of the rim so you know the rim size is actually measured at the tire uh, not not at the outer lip of the rim which overlaps it by about a half an inch so uh, you have to add an overall inch inch and a half to the uh, to the outside diameter there so anyway um, so an alias I'm going to show you how to set first of all set up the correct wheelbase and then to position the tires in the wide dimension to give you the correct track so um, as you can see, the way I've built this rim, the face of the tire is actually aligned at the center position. So um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going um, to select all of these surfaces. I'm going to go ahead and delete uh, construction history and I'm going to group everything together. That's just to make things a little easier here. Um, and I'm also going to turn off the uh, control vector so, so it, uh, our geometry is nice and simple. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. And so just, just going to look here at the wheelbase once again, it's 2874, uh, 2,874 millimeters. So, uh, so I'm going to go into the duplicate window here, um, duplicate object, and um, in the X dimension, I'm going to duplicate by 28, I'm going to translate by 2874. Oh, I uh, made a mistake there. Okay, yeah, I've got to go back to zero on the Y. So, I'm going to duplicate that. There we are. So now we have, I have two tires in the correct wheelbase. So then we got to take these two tires and move them into the outboard uh, position. So as you, as I said before, it's aligned at, at uh, I've aligned these uh, the face of tire at the center position. So when I go in to add what is the published overall width, um, 2,032 millimeters. That's that's uh, just over two meters wide. Um, since I'm since I'm translating from a center position, I have to cut that number in half. So I so I just went ahead and uh, divided that number in half. So it's uh, 1,016. Um, you know, so let's just round it up to an even 1,020. Let's just cheat it out a little bit. So, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate again. Um, this time, I'm going to uh, translate in Y by 1,020. Okay, uh, let me do that again because I got to use the negative number instead. So negative 1,020, very important. Okay, so then I can just go ahead and delete these. And uh, so now um, I've got, I've got uh, two tires positioned in the correct uh, outboard position. So what I'm gonna do then is just duplicate those two tires um, across the center line. So we have four equal wheels and tires. So I'm going to group these together, which is going to create a pivot point back at the uh, the zero 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 center position. Uh, I'm going to uh, 
open up my duplicate window again and uh, under scaling I'm going to hit negative one and that's going to give me two uh, two tires on the opposite side so there we have our crossover okay so let's go ahead and do the same with our truck I'm going to pick all the surfaces turn off the control points group everything together delete construction history um, so another way we can do this is we can just simply start by moving this tire out into the Y position. We'll, we, we can do that first. So let's see, what is our overall width it is 2190. That's, part, that's quite wide. Um, divide that in half, it's 1095. So let's just round it up to 1100. So um, in this, I'm going to try it a different way. I'm going to just use the move function and I'm going to hit, uh, just type it in the, the window up here, zero comma negative uh, what was that again? Um, 1100, so zero and negative 1100, and then comma zero again, and I just moved it to this out outward position. Let me just delete that curve there. Okay, so um, so then I can just take this tire and duplicate it again to get the correct wheelbase. So correct wheelbase is 3710. That's quite long, but this is a crew cab pickup truck. So, uh, so I'm gonna duplicate again, and in the dialog box, I'm gonna type in, I'm gonna go back to one here, and I'm gonna type in 3710. 3710. There we are. Um, I actually think that's a little too long. I think I'm gonna go with a slightly shorter wheelbase. So I'm gonna go and look up the Ford Raptor wheelbase again. There's two wheelbases. I chose the longer of the two. I'm gonna see what the shorter one is. So Ford Raptor dimensions. All right, let's do, let's do, Wikipedia is a good place to look up dimensions, so. So according to Wikipedia, the, there's two wheelbases available. There's uh, 3690 uh, for the Super Crew, which is the four-door truck, and then there's a 3390 for the Super Cab. So I, I'm going to see what it looks like at 3390. So I'm going to duplicate this again at uh, 3390. Yeah, that's that's a little better. I I, I want this uh, I want this to, to have full size truck dimensions, but be a little bit more compact in the length. So so then I'm going to um, I'm going to group those together and duplicate those across the center line. So hit negative one on the Y. There we have our, our truck uh, tires. Okay, so uh, the next one is the sports car. So we now in this case we have different size front and rear. So uh, we're going to do this a little bit differently. First of all, all right, let's uh, let's let's group all this together. Delete the construction history turn off the controls and let's go let's look up the width again so then in this case uh, the overall width is 1933 um, divide that uh, by 2 and, and it becomes uh, 966 uh, let's let's just bump that up to an even 1000 So we're gonna uh, actually no, we're gonna we're just gonna move it. We're gonna move it to uh, zero comma one thousand. Oh, negative one thousand. Zero. Okay. So the reason that it went off kilter like that is because not all of our objects were in the same pivot. So uh, we have to group these again. So that puts everything at the zero position. 
uh, let's, let's just uh, pick everything, group it together. Why does that one continue to be? Okay, let's just turn the pivots to zero, zero, zero. Okay. So let's move that to zero, comma, negative 1000, comma, zero. Okay, so now we have our front tire where it should be. And if you remember, the rear tire is a different size, so we have a different, uh, a different model for that. So we're gonna, uh, delete construction history, turn off control vectors and group. Okay, so now we're just gonna move this to a different position. Uh, so we're gonna move this to um, wheelbase is 2723. And in, in one step, we can move it uh, to the correct wheelbase and the correct width. So, um, so it's, yeah, it's uh, 2723 and then negative 1000, so. So we're gonna move it uh, 2723, comma, negative 1000, comma, zero. There we are. Now, um, also because these are different um, diameters, um, we're gonna have to adjust the rear tire so that it's sitting level with the front tire. So let's, let's just, um, let's do a quick horizontal line. So I'm just gonna, Draw a perfectly horizontal line and slide it up to line up with the front tire. And you can see the rear tire is hanging slightly lower, so we're going to move that rear tire up just a little bit so it's sitting level. Okay, and then the other thing I, I, I want to do is I'm going to I'm going to actually align the front tire on the inboard edge of the the rear tire. So group that again. So that the rear, the overall width of the rear of the car is wider than the front. Okay, so I can delete that curve and then I'm gonna group these together and I'm gonna duplicate across the center line to get four tires. There we are. So now we have a full set of wheels and tires. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and... So we have a full set of wheels and tires for our crossover, a, a full set of wheels and tires for our truck, and a full set of wheels and tires for our sports car. Uh, so then fi the final step is, I'm gonna save this. Final step is what do we do to get this into Gravity Sketch? Um, so Gravity Sketch accepts basically one file format, which is OBJ. So I'm gonna select every, uh, I'm gonna select all the surfaces for the Corvette wheel and tire. I'm gonna go export active as, and under the dialog box, I'm gonna hit OBJ. And under surface tessellation, this is very important because it won't, it won't come into Gravity Sketch correctly if you don't do this. Under surface tessellation, just say tessellate and save that and I'm just going to say Corvette wheels okay so that's converted to an OBJ file next off we'll do the CUV export active as OBJ with surface tessellation turned on uh, call the CUV wheels and 
and truck tires. Pick the surfaces, export active as OBJ, truck wheels. Okay, so uh, I, if everything goes well, once we import into Gravity Sketch, uh, you will be able to uh, build your exterior design off of an accurate set of tires. Um, and once we're in Gravity Sketch, we, I'll uh, show you how to build the actual design of the rims, uh, which is quite fun. There's quite a bit of uh, functionality within Gravity Sketch to do that. So uh, thanks again for tuning in. Um, at this point, we have just about everything we need now to set up an accurate dimensional model in Gravity Sketch.